as you know, we are on chapter 11 and uh, we have covered already chapter 10 and 9 of this book by Bebs Sidwa, The Ice Candy Man or Cracking India. In this chapter, as you are having a look at, we will be able to again see how Aya plays a major role and how Lenny becomes an observer of the whole scenario. For example, here, the chapter begins with the, these green lines, if you can look at that. These green lines talk about different lovers, more lovers, which are adding into the list of lovers of Aya. For example, here, if you look at, we have uh, Flatty's Hotel Cook, the government house gardener, a sleek and arrogant butcher, and the zoo attendant, Sher Singh. All these people are the lovers of Aya somehow they appreciate her and remain quite close to them but the writer tries to show us according to this passage that Masir is the most important person he is handsome reserved competent assured massaging barding heads netting naughty shoulders and soothing aching limbs so in that way the most useful person among these lovers is going to be Masir uh, let me take you to the next step of this chapter and see how Mosier becomes the person whom the writer has said to be handsome, competent, assured, and massaging the person who is having lots of qualities, let us see, by going into the further chapters, further paragraphs of this chapter. For example, uh, when you look at uh, this page, you will be able to find that there is one word which has been greened once again, and this word is about fertility pills. This goes to show that uh, this masier is capable of making certain pills as well. He will be able to give these pills to or sell his pills to some men and women, asking them that if this pill is very helpful if they want to have a good family life. So in that way also, masier goes to prove that he can do anything at any time. Let's go further. In the downcoming pages, we will be able to see that some of the words have been used because of which the political element in this novel begins. This chapter mentions some of the names because of which we remember the history of Pakistan as well as that of India. This also reminds us the colonial and post-colonial aspect of this novel. For example, here the word has been used Lat Sahab Wewal. Lat Sahab Wewal. Now this Lat Sahab word is quite common among the villagers as well because at that time the English rulers were named in that way uh, like Viceroy, like Lat Sahib. So therefore when we mention this word we are able to remind ourselves about the history of India and that of Pakistan when the English rulers were ruling our, our country. Similarly, if you proceed a little bit further, you have more evidence of this political history like uh, Gandhu, Nehru, Patel, these three names have been mentioned here. Then afterwards, Muslim League uh, has also been mentioned and lastly, on the same page, you can find out Mount Batten Sahab also. The mention of these people goes to talk about that a, a, a amalgamation of political element is present. Some of the leaders from the Muslim side, some of the leaders from the Hindu side, and some of the leaders uh, from the colonial master, the white man's side or the English man's side are also present here. Let me take you to the further lines and passages which are important in this regard. For example, if you look at this page, this page has one, two green lines. For example, the first green line says, Nehru and the Mountbatten's are like this. Then who's going to hold our Jinnah Saab's hand, Master Tara Singh? First of all, the first line goes to show that there was some kind of liaison, some kind of rendezvous, or a type of relationship was going on between Mr. Nehru and Mountbatten, and that is why people are discussing here. If the uh, these two people become friends with each other, where would Mr. Jinnah go? Because the Muslims were not being talked about in the same way, friendly towards the English people as Mr. Nehru was. So another aspect of the history, political history of Pakistan has been talked about. Let's go further and see what else we can discuss in this uh, in this part of the chapter. Uh, here, for example, if you look at this, this page, we have the green area. It says there is much disturbing talk. India is going to be broken. Can one break a country? And what happens if they break it? Where our houses or crack it further up on Varis Road? How will I ever get to Godmothers then? I ask cousin. Rubbish, he says, no one's going to break India. It's not made of glass, I ask Aya. So that's the very innocent question put by Lenny that the people are saying they are going to break India, they are going to crack India. In that way, these lines go to reflect to the second title of the novel, Cracking India. 
or dividing India. Uh, Lenny is a child and therefore it's asking the other people how it will be happening. If it is possible to do so, the, the childhood or the childish nature of Lenny can be expanded in terms of all those minorities who were not Muslims or who were not Hindus. Hindus were going to get their India, Muslims were going to get their Pakistan and all these minorities are putting a question that what they will get out of all that. In fact, they won't get anything because they were not considered two nations in that way and the same claim has been done, same complaint has also made, been made by Sidwa in this type of lines or the paragraphs that she has written in her novel. Let's go further and see this, uh, there's a line here where green line for example it says on Fridays they sat about uh, preparing themselves for Stanchi City and then it says sometimes at odd hours of the day they spread their mats on the front lawn and pray when the Muslim calls crammed into a narrow religious slot they too are diminished as are Jinnah, Iqbal, Ice Candy Man and Masir. Hari and Moti the sweeper and his wife Macho and their untouchable daughter Papu become ever more untouchable as they are entrenched deeper in their low Hindu caste while the Shamas and the Daldrams, Brahmins like Nehru are dehumanized by their lofty caste and the caste marks. So in this uh, part of the chapter the writer is trying to say that Hindus were themselves uh, divided. First of all Indian nation was divided into different sections for example into Muslims and into Hindus and these Hindus were further divided into low caste Hindus and high caste Hindus. Now this type of divide according to Sidwa was not available among the Parsis and that divide was weakening the people of India. Here the example of uh, uh, Macho's, um, uh, Macho's wife has been given and the daughter of Macho has been given that they were already untouchable because they were low of caste and again they will become even more untouchable when Hindus discuss their own nation or the qualities of their religion and in that way some people will become again untouchable. This thing does not exist among the Parsis that is why Sidhu is trying to say that these are the seeds of separation and division because of which India will definitely be divided. Let's go down the drain and see what more we can talk about this passages or this chapter. Here in this chapter 11 we have therefore some of the significant things which have been talked about. Uh, like in this chapter you see we have a very different thing which has been discussed with respect to the Muslims. For example here in this passage which is a colored passage we can see that uh, Mosir is having a telephone set with him. This is not a mobile phone it's a kind of uh, telephone which is uh, which is a wire telephone and with the help of that one can dial to any number the dial is also round in shape where you put your finger and make a dial I think some of you might have seen it such telephones are only available in museums these are not available now in the digital age but here 786 is the number that Masir dials and he shows that he can talk to guard on this telephone in that way a very different type of aspect of mysticism has been highlighted because there are the people who would claim that they can talk directly to God or at least they will be able to make the people fool of them by saying that they can convey the messages of the common people towards God in this way. They can help the people solve their problems which they are suffering. That is the type of culture in India and this is the culture which is going on all the time. For example, if you look here, there, there is uh, something mentioned in this paragraph like if you read it, Suddenly he springs up thumping his noisy trident on the ground performing a curious jumping dance he shouts walla walla so loudly that several people who have been watching the goings on from afar hastily get up and scamper over. Six Hindus Muslims from a thick circle round us I noticed my little sick friend. I can tell from reverent faces around me that they believe they are in presence of a holy man crazed by his love of God and the matter the mystic the greater his power. Now here in this passage uh, aside of the Muslim people that is the Sufism among the Muslim people or mysticism as they call it that has been talked about that such people are quite abundantly available in India and most of these people are thinking that they are able to talk to God they are especially linked with God so that is why the thing about the peers and fakirs has also been talked about. The same thing is pointed out by Professor Ahmad Ali in his novel Twilight and Delhi as well 
by mentioning number of fakirs and beggars there. Same is the case here that these fakirs claim to be talking to God and sometimes they would utter certain words like that. They would dance and trance in such a way as if appearing that they have connected themselves with God. This aspect of the Muslim religion has been discussed by Sidwa in this chapter as well. Let us go forward and see what further happens there. Going down the pages, I'm able to convey you here that there are again the discussion on the Hindu people, but the discussion stops here when the Hindu people start calling the Parsi people as Croiters, Croiters, in that way children also call the same thing. And uh, you will be surprised to listen that uh, Sidwa has written actually a novel whose title is The Croiters. Uh, in that way, she is trying to say possibly that the Parsis are Croiters. Now, it doesn't, doesn't mean actually that they go to eat the crows. It, 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 it in fact means that, that the Parsi people talk too much. Without stop, they talk too much. They continuously talk as well. And this thing has been talked about in these green lines as well. And so that is why over-talking is related to the crowing of the crow. And that is why crow eaters and crow eaters have been talked about. And moreover, as we say a, to someone who is talking too much, we tell to that person, okay, have you eaten the crows? That is why you are talking so much and that is why again in this paragraph this type of thing or the culture of the Parsi people that they talk too much without stop, they continuously talk, they do not get tired of talking. That is mentioned here in this part of the chapter. In that way people chapter 11 finishes and chapter 12 again has something beautiful for us uh, but we need to look for that so I'm converging the pages and going forward you will read the full chapter but here I am going to explain to you something about Mr. Gandhi and uh, we don't need to read all these uh, you know paragraphs right now you will be reading at your places I just want to point out to you people that Gandhi ji was the habit of having fasts whatever bad thing would happen he will go on hunger strike and would fast as much as possible and in that way if the british would not agree to something he will go to fast if the muslims are not agreeing to something he will go to fast and in the, as a result he will become a trouble for all the people and he would ask the other people also to go to fast as well lenny's mom lenny's other people they also went to fast and uh, they tried to observe the fast as Mr. Gandhi would do so, but, but they couldn't do so. Especially the children, for example, mentioned in this part of the passage. They will find out that it's very difficult for them, so they would eat something here and there. But the most important thing is that Mr. Gandhi's philosophy has been talked about, that he would not eat much and mostly would remain on fast. And in order to record his protest also, he would go to keeping the fast most of the time. We also keep the fast, but we keep the fast to thank God or to earn something good in this world. Uh, here, Gandhi is keeping the fast in order to support his nation or to become a great leader of their nation. And that is why, again, we are finding here the political aspect, aspect repeated on the, on the mention of this Mr. Gandhi as well. So going down in order to find out more about this chapter. In the 12th chapter, we have something very significant with respect to Pir Pindo. Uh, Pir Pindo is a place where Imam Deen goes occasionally. And Imam Deen, as you know, in certain last chapter you have read, that Imam Deen takes Lenny there also. And in that in that village, we have one person, Rana, who is a boy, a very young boy. That Rana becomes a friend of this uh, Lenny, and Lenny spends some time there. Same is the case with Mr. Imam Deen as well. Mr. Imam Deen also has a grandson there, and uh, whose name has been taken as the... Uh, most of the time told to us here in the, in the passage, Dost Muhammad, for example, is the name of that person taken here. Uh, this is the village which is not the village of the Muslim people just. This is the village of the Sikhs also, that of the Hindus also, and that of the Muslims as well. All these people have been living quite together in company without, uh, you know, any type of troubles. They were considered to be the brothers and sisters. They were sharing the griefs and pains and happinesses of the people. But all of a sudden, because of this partition thing, because of the differences between Hindus and Muslims, something is happening in that, that village as well. And that is why the village has become a very difficult place for the people. Lenny is the witness of all that. Uh, those Muhammad is also there. And uh, some of the habits of those Muhammad and that of Rana have been talked about, which are not that important. The important thing is that what was going to happen because of this divide. Mostly it will be the problem that the people who have been living together for centuries, for hundreds of years, they will certainly become enemies of each other. And there is the uh, one organization of the 
uh, you know, sick people, which is named here as, for example, if you look at the fourth line of this green space, you will be able to find Akalis. Akalis, which can be translated as the immortals. These immortals or Akalis were the people who were a type of Sikh leading organization who wanted the establishment of the Sikh rule in Punjab. They didn't want anybody to loot the Punjabis or to divide Punjab and that is why they were very active at that time and they could kill any person who proved to be anti-Sikh person or who tried to damage the province of Punjab and that is why the whole description of these people has been made. I mean, what type of appearance they had, what type of behaviors they had, or what type of things they did at that time, and how much anti-Muslims they were. That has been talked about with reference to Peer Pindo uh, in this chapter number 12. Imam Din being a Muslim was very much upset. He wanted to get back, and he didn't want these things to happen to his village. So he tried to gather the Muslims and Sikhs in order to protect the a village from the people but definitely he couldn't do that it was not possible for him because the Sikhs had different views although the Sikhs promised good security and good refuge for the Muslims but it didn't happen because of the Akali Sikhs who were coming to that area again and again and they could cause any type of trouble as well the mention of the city of Lahore and Amritsar and Jalandhar is again to talk about that these cities used to be the one place one people but now it has to be divided ultimately because of the uh, Hindus and the uh, Muslim trouble or the two nation theory which these people were practicing. Now look at this paragraph, it goes to talk about some of the fears, some of the beauties, some of the eating habits of the people, for example eating of the parathas and then the, of the fair, that was the Bisaki fair. Everybody recognized and celebrated the Bisaki fair, be it Muslim, be it Hindu. But now that unity was breaking, now everything was beginning to break and crack or to finish and that is why it has been talked about here in this chapter also. As a result, the political element of uh, all the significance has been talked about in this paragraph. Let us go further down. Uh, we will be able to find one word in the very beginning of this green area. This word is about the Gorkhas. Gorkhas are again the people who are army people, fighter people. And these fighters are also mentioned here once again because at the time of partition, such people were very active and they were using their power in order to gain influence here and there. And same is the case with the lower coming passages. Chaudhary of the village has also been talked about. In chapter 13 now, there is only one thing that we shall be discussing in chapter 13. That uh, for this purpose we need to come here and see what is this paragraph about? In this chapter, Raj returns once again to the Parsi culture and uh, he begins. To, she begins to talk about the God Mother and other people who are related to God Mother in the Parsi culture. All these things she begins to talk once again. Uh, she in fact tries to force the idea that Parsis are quite different people. They are uh, very much charitable people because the fear of God they are charitable. So in that way, some of the good qualities of the Parsi people has been talked about with reference to God Mother, with, with reference to Mini Auntie. And now, uh, in that way, the Parsi culture has been praised once again. So in that, uh, we can say that in this novel, Sidwa is using the technique of describing every culture of the Muslim people and that of the Hindu people, six people, and certainly she goes to talk about the Parsi culture as well. But in comparison, if we see the Parsi culture has been praised to be peaceful, to be wealthier, to be happy, to be taking care of everything, demanding nothing, no fights at all, all these good qualities she tries to assign to the Parsi culture instead of uh, assigning these qualities to any other culture. So violence is absent and uh, there is nothing which is bad about the Parsi culture talked about. If anything bad has been talked about, as was that of the Croatians, that is simply to show that Parsi people have this type of humor as well. And then in the same chapter, possibly somewhere, which I have ignored to talk to people, the Tower of Strength is talked about. Uh, well, that Tower of Strength is the kind of place which is high, and at that place, the Parsis put, put their dead people. Instead of burying in the ground, they put their dead people. Uh, the old people or the young people all are placed up so that the crows may eat. And perhaps uh, that is why the name of these people, crow eaters, has been there. The dead bodies of the Parsi people are eaten by the animals or by the birds, not by the uh, earth or by fire as the Hindus do. That is the difference of the culture of the Parsi people that has also been discussed here. So it's all about these three chapters. Now you are required to go through these chapters and we will be talking and discussing and writing something about it.